Nice lost check down countdown net. Pad is clear. 10, 9, 8. Launch auto sequence seven, has started. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go for launch. Looking at a live view of Falcon Heavy on historic launch complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center awaiting liftoff at 8.07 p.m. Eastern Time. Welcome to our live webcast of the USSF-52 mission where SpaceX will launch the Space Force's X-37B Orbital Test Vehicle, or OTV, to space for its seventh overall mission to date. The OTV payload will conduct tests that include operating the reusable space plane in new orbital regimes, experimenting with future space domain awareness technologies, and investigating the radiation effects on materials provided by NASA. My name is Jesse Anderson, and I'm a Manufacturing Engineering Manager here at SpaceX, and I'm excited to be here with you today, bringing you coverage of our fifth and final Falcon Heavy mission for the year, ninth overall since first taking flight in 2018, and third Falcon Heavy launch in support of a national security lo space launch mission. And as 2023 comes to a close, today's mission also marks our 95th launch of the year with our final mission expected to lift off from our neighboring pad in Florida in about three hours from now. And you can see both of those rockets there on your screen. A big thanks to all of our customers and the SpaceX team for a record breaking year. Now, today's mission marks the second time the X-37B orbital test vehicle will take flight on a SpaceX launch vehicle. Some of you may recall the first flight on Falcon 9 back in September of 2017, in which OTV-5 spent a record 780 days in orbit, breaking the vehicle's own endurance record. Here's a closer look at today's payload. For those of you following along, you'll know that we stood down from our initial launch attempt for this mission on Sunday, December 10th, due to bad weather. On our second attempt the following day, during the count, our teams reviewed data related to system checkouts, which resulted in a no-go condition and decision to stand down from launch that evening. We rolled the vehicle back to our hangar at Launch Complex 39A in Florida to be able to further assess data and address any issues. And during this time, the payload remained healthy and all systems are go for an on-time liftoff tonight. Weather is also looking great for today's T0. Today's flight will be on the Falcon Heavy that you see there on your screen. This is essentially three Falcon 9 rockets strapped together, which means that it can carry much larger payloads, not only to Earth orbit, but to the Moon and Mars as well. Like the Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy is a two-stage launch vehicle. The big difference is that the Falcon Heavy first stage is comprised of three cores, and Falcon 9 has only one. Falcon Heavy has 28 engines total. Each one of those these cores has nine M1D engines, making for a total of 27 engines across all three boosters, which you can see there on your screen. 
The 28th engine is a Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage and will power the payload to its separation orbit. Now, altogether, the Merlin 1D engines at the base of Falcon Heavy produce 5 million pounds of thrust, which is equal to 18 747s at takeoff. And in fact, the engines produce so much power that we don't run them all at full thrust all at once until after liftoff. About two and a half minutes into flight, the two side boosters will separate from the center core and come back to Earth for near simultaneous landings at landing zone one and landing zone two at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. This will be the fifth launch and landing of these Falcon Heavy side boosters, which previously supported USSF 44 and 67, Hughes Jupiter 3, and NASA's Psyche mission. Upon side booster separation, the center core will keep firing for about 90 seconds before shutting down its engines and then perform a standard stage separation from the second stage. We will not be attempting to land our center core today. For those of you looking closely, this is why you don't see any landing legs or grid fins on the center core. And moving towards the top of the vehicle, once the first and second stage separate, the second stage will propel our payload to its intended orbit. At our customer's request, we will not be showing views of stage two, so immediately after the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage fires up, we'll be directing all of our attention to the landing of our side boosters. Now above the second stage is where our payload is safely enclosed inside of the fairing. The fairing protects the payload from aerothermal loads, heating, and contamination during ascent. Once we reach the vacuum of space, we will jettison the fairing as the second stage continues on its journey to orbit. We will be attempting to recover the fairing halves today with our recovery vessel, Doug. And at T minus 10 minutes and eight seconds, the SpaceX team continues to count down towards our eighth operational Falcon Heavy launch and ninth overall since taking flight in a demonstration test flight back in February of 2018. All systems are a go. Before we began the webcast, the SpaceX launch director pulled the members of the launch team and got a go for propellant loading and launch. And we are currently loading propellant on all three first stage boosters as well as the second stage. Now you may be able to hear some of the live rocket sounds from our launch pad. Those pops and hissing sounds that you hear are from, from, are from propellant loading, as well as the launch mount and strong back that the propellant is flowing through. Falcon Heavy uses two propellants. One is a refined form of kerosene called RP-1 or Rocket Propellant 1. That's our fuel. The other is our oxidizer, which is liquid oxygen or commonly called LOX. An oxidizer is a type of chemical that releases oxygen to mix with fuel and allows it to burn. Liquid oxygen is chilled well below its boiling point so that it has a much greater amount of mass per volume, which basically means that we can load more of it into the rocket. As a fun fact, the Saturn V first stage flown from this very pad on the moon missions also used liquid oxygen and kerosene. In addition to these two propellants, we also use the chemical TTEB or triethyl aluminum and triethyl borane as an ignition source. The combustion of RP-1 and liquid oxygen is what makes the rocket go or fly, and it's the TTEB that sets the match to the propellant mix. Today's mission is for the U.S. Space Force and is being overseen by Space Systems Command, or SSC. Center core, RP-1 load is complete. Space Systems Command is the U.S. Space Force's field command responsible for acquiring and delivering resilient capabilities and groundbreaking technologies to protect our nation's strategic advantage in and from space. For more on the SSC, let's take a listen. Ultimate high ground has no ground. The satellites in orbit around our planet provide the critical infrastructure we use to defend and protect the security and prosperity of this world we all share. But space is no longer a benign environment. Adversaries and near-peer nations are actively working to dominate the most critical battleground of our day. At Space Systems Command, the time to act is now. The race is on. Our adversary is out there. They are going to work every day, 
trying to work harder, smarter, faster than us, but we are making sure that that does not happen. The Guardians, Airmen, and partners of Space Systems Command are working with unstoppable urgency to innovate and act now. Delivering solutions to emerging threats, creating resilient space architectures we can all rely on, especially during times of crisis and conflict. The fight could happen tonight, it could happen tomorrow, it could happen in a couple of years, but we need to start innovating now and that's exactly what we're doing. For Space Systems Command, working faster means breaking from the status quo, exploiting existing space architectures and capabilities in creative new ways, working with commercial industry, innovators and tech startups, and allied nations to exploit, buy, and build, to deliver better, faster, and more affordably. We are advancing the space architecture that we have up there right now, making sure that it's optimal, making sure that we get new space architecture set up, prototyping, experiments, to ensure that we can outpace the enemy tomorrow. To maintain our lead in space, Space Systems Command has embraced a new culture, empowering its people to race forward, speak up, and connect with industry in unprecedented new ways. Our people are agile, they continue our partnerships, they are working collaboratively day after day in order to contribute to the big warfighter purpose. Space is a team sport. We have to work together to provide integrated, resilient capability and speed in order to fight through any contingency or crisis. Space Systems Command is moving fast to maintain U.S. superiority in space, running a marathon of sprints, thinking differently, acting boldly, empowering at every level to make space work for us all. At Space Systems Command, space starts here. At T minus four minutes and 45 seconds, all systems are currently a go for an on-time liftoff. Next up, the trusted structure next to the vehicle, which is known as the strong back, will begin to retract away from the vehicle, and that is in preparation for liftoff. Strong back retract has started. And there's that call out. Now, you could see on your screen, just below the fairing, around the second stage are some clamp arms, and they're starting to slowly open up. Once they are fully open, then the TE can begin to recline away from the vehicle. And the vehicle is nearly fully loaded with propellants and will complete at T minus two minutes. And there you can see on your screen, those clamp arms are opening up there. The range is green and ready to support. Weather is 90% go for T zero. So NY lock float is complete. Very great news with the weather. If for some reason we do not launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow around the same time. And there you can see on your screen, the clamp arms are now fully open. So that TE to the right of the vehicle that you see there, to the right of the fairing, is beginning to slowly move away from the vehicle. Additionally, TY lock float is complete. Additionally, it is worth noting that at the request of our customer, we will, again, not be showing views of the payload. So we will be ending the webcast just after Falcon Heavy's side boosters make their way back to land on landing zone one and landing zone two around the T plus eight minute mark into flight. Center core, lock float is complete. And we just heard that call out. The spacecraft is on internal power. Just heard that call out that the center core liquid oxygen loading is complete. That concludes all first stage vehicle propellant loading. We are still loading liquid oxygen on the second stage, and that should conclude at the T minus two minute mark, which will also conclude all propellant loading for Falcon Heavy. And you can also see these white clouds on your screen. This is normal. This is us just venting out the boiled off liquid oxygen at the liquid. Stage two lock float is complete. 
And there's that call out that stage two locks load is complete. That concludes propellant loading on Falcon Heavy. Again, those white clouds that you see around the vehicle are normal. That's us venting out the liquid oxygen that has boiled off of the liquid surface out into the ambient air. Once that cold liquid oxygen meets that warm ambient air, it basically condenses just as you would see water condensing around a cold glass of water. The next event coming up will be Falcon Heavy in startup. That's at the T minus one minute mark. Ground gas close out. And now that we have finished the propellant loading, we are also clearing out the liquid oxygen line on that transporter erector, and that's why you see a little bit more of those white clouds there on your screen. Again, at the T minus one minute mark, Falcon Heavy will be in startup. This is an autonomous vehicle, so the internal flight computers will take over the launch countdown. Falcon Heavy is in startup. Great news, there's that call out that Falcon Heavy is in startup. Now just waiting for the final call from the launch director. This is the mission director, go for launch. And great news with that call out, all systems are go for launch of Falcon Heavy with USSF 52. T minus 30 seconds. plus 50 seconds into Falcon Heavy's flight under the power of 5 million pounds of thrust. Falcon Heavy is carrying OTV, OTV-7 out to space. And we are coming up on max Q here in a few seconds. Max Q. And great call out there. We have passed through max Q. That is the point of peak mechanical stress on the vehicle, and we've now passed through that. So we do have a few events coming up here. That will be booster engine cutoff, or BECO, separation of the side boosters, followed by side booster boost back burn startup, and then the center core main engine cutoff, or MECO. Now again, those are a few events coming up here. Biko, side booster separation. That'll be the separation from the center core. The center core will continue to carry stage two with the payload until it shuts down its engines with Miko and performs a standard stage separation like you see on a Falcon 9. And there you can see on your screen, on your right-hand screen, some views from the side boosters and a really awesome view of Falcon Heavy on your left-hand screen with all of those engines burning really bright there. Coming up on Miko, Biko in a few seconds here. Booster engine cut off. Side booster separation confirmed. Come back, Phil. Booster, boost back startup. 
And great news, we were able to also see that live on your screen, Biko, the side boosters have separated from the center core and we have the startup of the boost back burn on both of those side boosters looking really awesome there on your screen. Now the side boosters are returning to Florida under the power of three engines. Coming up are a few events in rapid succession. That will be the conclusion of the side boosters boost back burn. Miko, stage separation of the center core and the second stage, as well as SES-1 or the NVAC engine igniting on the second stage. SES-1 stands for second stage engine startup. And as I mentioned previously, per the request of our customer, we will not be showing second stage views after SES-1. Additionally, our center core or stage one is expendable today, so we will not be attempting to recover it, but we will be following the side boosters back to land, so you can continue to stay tuned for that. Now we're coming up on the conclusion of the side boosters burn. Booster, boost back, shut down. Stage separation confirmed. And back in mission and full pass. And there we were also able to see and hear the call outs for the side boosters, boost back burns concluding. We had Miko, our main engine cutoff of the center core, as well as stage separation, and also heard confirmation that the NVAC engine has ignited. Now, as we mentioned before- Fairing separation confirmed. And great call out there, also a confirmation that the fairing has separated from the second stage. Again, we will be attempting to recover those fairing halves when they fall back to earth using our recovery vessel, Doug. Trajectory is nominal. Now again, as I mentioned earlier, the center core was not built to land or be reused. It is expendable, having given its all for the mission. Los Angeles. We will say a big thank you to the center core. For the two side boosters, the boost back burns have completed. And so far, the vehicles are on a good trajectory, coming back to land. And again, with successful second engine start one, that will wrap up our coverage pertaining to the stage, to, to the second stage. So we'll focus our attention on the side boosters. Now those side boosters are currently on their way back to land. In order to land back on land, we typically have three burns. Center core FTS has saved. We typically have three burns. They've already concluded a boost back burn, which helps them turn back around and head back towards land. The next burn coming up is the entry burn. That's where we'll reignite three of the engines on each of those boosters, and that helps slow them down as they enter back into the Earth's atmosphere. Now, if we do have successful landings today, we'll mark the 257th and 258th landing of an orbital class rocket. And those entry burns are coming up here in about 30 seconds or so. And again, as I mentioned earlier, the center core will be expended and we are not attempting to recover it today. Again, the entry burn is coming up here for the side boosters. Booster entry burn startup. And there's that call out that the entry burns have begun on the side boosters. And there you can see on your screen. Stage two, FTS is saved. You can see on your screen, the engines have reignited. Booster entry burn shut down. EY FTS has saved. And a short NY burn. FTS has saved. Short burn for both of those boosters, just under 20 seconds. All vehicles are on nominal trajectories. Great call outs there. All vehicles on nominal trajectories. Now, again, we do have one more burn for each of these side boosters coming up in just about 30 seconds. That is the landing burn. It's a single engine burn for each booster. 
and just one engine is powerful enough to slow the vehicles down and safely land back on land. Again, we are targeting, Transonic. targeting landing zone one and landing zone two for today's landings. Booster landing burn. And we heard that call out, and you can see on your screen that the engines have reignited. Landing leg deploy. Let's watch as the side boosters touch down for landing. Stage two is in thermal guidance. <laughs> and there you can see on your screen and hear the crowd here, very excited. We have successfully landed both Falcon Heavy side boosters on landing zone one and landing zone two. With these two side boosters, this marks the 257th and 258th overall successful landing of an orbital class rocket. And with successful confirmation of our side boosters landing, that will bring our webcast to a close today. We'd like to thank the United States Space Force for entrusting us with today's mission. And we'd like to thank all of our viewers for tuning in. As a reminder, in about three hours from now, our 96th and final mission of 2023 is set to lift off from our neighboring pad here in Florida. Be sure to tune in for that one. We hope you all enjoy a happy and healthy new year. And we'll see you back here for an exciting 2024.